So if you're an over-the-top provider, you already have a challenge because you are coming on an unmanaged network, you're dealing with very variable bandwidth, you're dealing with very, very different devices. People are watching everything from a cell phone, through a tablet, through a big screen TV, and you have to deliver to all those different environments. Any change is therefore a challenge. We're talking about changing the picture, the most fundamental part of what you're streaming. And some of those devices are going to be capable, and some of them are not. And over the next few years, you're going to blend between the, between the few. So you'll have TVs that can do HDR, but maybe not be in a wider color gamut. You might have devices, tablets, that are in a wider color gamut, but they can't do HDR. And then you've still got hundreds of millions of legacy devices out there you have to serve. So the challenge for OTT is how do you provide these enhancements to just the devices that need to see it or can see it, whilst still maintaining a high quality of service for everybody else that hasn't yet moved on. A lot of these over-the-top providers are also producing content now as well. So they haven't got the option of, we have to license content. What do we license? Do we license HDR versions of content? Do we have all our content creators go back and recreate content? And then what do we do? Do we make all of our content going forward in a new format, break new boundaries, be the first to break new technologies? The good news about being an OTT provider is you don't have to worry about standards. You don't have to worry about broadcast standards you know, catching up. You don't have to worry that there's a different standard in Europe than there is in the US. You can write your own standards. So you own the apps, you build the apps, you do your own encoding, you do your own delivery, and you're delivering over the internet. So there is no one regulating the internet for you. There's no one defining when you have to upgrade your infrastructure to be a certain technology system. So you have a lot of choice, and the downside is you have a lot of choice. You have a lot of flexibility. When do you adopt things? When do you wait for the market to happen? Our prediction at Technicolor is enhancements like high dynamic range, wider color gamut, they're going to come fast. They're going to come a lot faster than 4K did because they're a lot more impactful for consumers. They're a lot more bandwidth efficient, so you don't have to send as much data as you to send 4K. And when a consumer sees it, they're going to be very attracted to the image and they're going to want to expect it on lots more content. So if you're an over-the-top provider, we've already established these things are going to move fast. The question then is, how do you make the decision when to leap? And which of these different technologies do you go adopt and when? The good news is that your consumers are going to tell you. If you're an internet provider, you get very fast feedback as to what is working and what's not working. And you're going to know pretty fast. You're going to know that consumers are more attracted to a certain type of content because it has a higher dynamic range or it has a wider color space, or it's somehow more impactful, because you can see that they're watching for longer, they're turning off less, they are transacting more often for that content when they see that it's available in a, in a new video technology. And they're your key metrics. And the great thing about these over-the-top providers is they live by metrics. So you're going to know what is impactful for your business line much, much faster than anyone is in the broadcast world or a pay TV world where you don't know who you're broadcasting to. So that's the good news. The bad news is that you have a lot of work to do and you don't know which one to go pick. So we can help with that, right? We can do consumer research. We can try these different technologies out on different pieces of content, see what's really resonating. But the most important thing is this content is going to last for the next 50 or 60 years. So don't, whatever you do, capture content now and miss out on a high dynamic range pass or think, oh, I'll shoot in a broadcast only standard because that's what I need today you don't have time for that anymore. When you're shooting content now, you need to assume that the world is going to keep moving on and moving on and moving on and shoot and prepare for that world. The good news is it's not a big investment all at one time. You can test the water with this sort of thing. We can work in small incremental steps. So you can try one season of a TV show, try it in HDR and see what happens to the numbers. Do the same thing with a few movies. There is 5,000, 7,000 movies on Netflix. You don't need to do all those at once. It's easy to pick off the ones that people really, you know, the new releases, the ones that people are really watching right now, and work on those and see what happens. I'd actually recommend going back and picking a few similar titles out of the library, similar sort of decade, shot on similar film stock, regrade those in HDR, put them out, see which one does better. Can you actually see the difference in viewership or transaction numbers when you improve the video quality and use that as a business case to go back and work out which ones to do from the library. There's multiple different ways of being an over-the-top provider. 
There's subscription video on demand, there's transactional video on demand, there's advertising based video on demand. They're all thrown together under this umbrella term OTT, but really they're very different business models and they have very different metrics. If you're running a transactional store, you put a card up with the information about the piece of content and you need people to transact on that basis. They don't they maybe watch a trailer, but once they're in, they're paying. So you're all about how can I get people to pay for the highest value SKU that I've got. And what that normally means is that's where you put all your value. That's where you put your high definition today, that's where you'll put 4K tomorrow, you'll put high dynamic range, you'll put wider color gamut, and you have to try and get people to transact on that highest value product. So that's a key difference between a subscription video on, provide, uh, on demand provider like a Netflix, right? They had access to everything at every quality level. Then you're just trying to keep people to keep watching something. You're lowering churn. You have to keep offering more and more content, interesting ways. Why watch it here when you could watch it in other places? It's much more about keeping the consumer uh, attracted every month as, as they keep going, so they keep paying that bill. And then you look at advertising. Advertising video on demand is a very, very different business. You've got to do ad breaks, and then you have to know what people are watching across as many different media types as you can, so you can pick a good advert for them, and you need them to watch the advert. They need to preferably even click through to prove they're watching the advert. There's a lot of challenges with next generation video content when you hit advertising. You're watching a high dynamic range, really impactful TV show, and then you plummet down to a standard dynamic range TV commercial. People are going to think it looks dark. They're going to think it looks muted. The colors are all wrong. They're going to think this thing is a really low quality product and advert. So we have to avoid that. That implies, therefore, you're going to have to start making TV commercials in high dynamic range and wider color gamut as well, just so they have a consistency with the programming. So many different considerations, even in just OTT world. I think the challenge right now, if you're in the OTT business, is you're in the internet-driven world, everything is happening so fast, there are so many changes coming, you're trying to catch up with so many different device types and, and new app development formats and changes in the internet and the infrastructure. The challenge right now is how do you even stay focused on changes in video formats as well? But right now, this is the one you need to be looking at because this is the one that's gonna dramatically change the consumer viewing environment. Higher dynamic range and wider color gamuts are gonna have a huge impact on consumers and therefore the economics of the OT2 business globally for the next few years.